This video is going to be on replacing the coolant hoses that go to the oil cooler on 1.9 TDI Volkswagen. So, first of all, this one was leaking right here where it connects to this pipe. Now this hose, as you can see, as I was taking it off, more cracks appeared. Now this was fun to find because when it started leaking, it started leaking from the bottom of the hose and spraying onto the engine and it spread out from the far driver's side to the far passenger side. And so we had to take the engine cover off, put a little pressure on the system, and make it start leaking again to find it spraying out the bottom of this hose. Of course, you're going to have to clean all this corrosion off the nipple here. But you can't just replace this one hose. The other end of this hose goes down here. Get you guys down here where you can see real good. Down here to the oil cooler. See the nipple right there? That's where the other end of it goes. But then there's another hose to the oil cooler right there, which goes up to right here. I'm going to have to clean that corrosion off. You'll see in a minute while I'm mentioning this hose. And right behind that hose, as you're trying to take this hose off, right behind that hose is a pipe here that makes it very difficult, unless you're lucky and your pipe is a little bit further in. But mine is over here pinching the hose as I'm trying to get the hose off. And that pipe comes from right here and carries oil around and to the turbo. So it's the feed oil for the turbo. And down here, I'll show you why we have to replace both hoses at the same time. You see that little rubber bridge? That's going between the hose that's leaking to the other hose. Now, while you're doing hoses like this, you have to get a screwdriver or something and push on these hoses really hard to get them off of the nipples. And there's always going to be something sharp, like this piece right here, it's got me, where you're, you're pushing and pushing, and then it slips off the hose and hits there. And this is one of the reasons why I keep telling you guys, burnt, bruised, or bleeding. If you don't want to end up burnt, bruised, or bleeding, don't be doing this kind of work, because it happens on every single job. And please, don't flag my video like people have in the past just because I showed a little blood. Because that's part of working on cars. And usually I don't show this on my videos because of in the past being flagged by it. So if you don't want to see that kind of thing, just watch somebody else's videos. At least don't do the like I do and take more safety precautions. Wear gloves. Um, Wear some eye protection, you know, stuff like that. Either that or just consider it part of the job. Now, you see, the, the blood's getting on everything, so let me show you how to fix this. You've always got some masking tape, and if you're smart, you got paper towels and stuff for wiping off car parts and stuff, like wiping off that stuff. And just put some paper towels on it and wrap the duct tape around it as I got it through here between the fingers to hold it up tight against the wound and then wrap around a second time all the way around here to keep it from moving around so much so you can finish the job and you can wipe that stuff off the back of it okay and here it is off the vehicle see it actually goes like that on the front of the engine sits so like this see this doesn't pass any coolant between here it just holds the two together something you could do with a zippy tie so if you want to replace these with regular hose as long as you don't have any kinks in them that's fine or you can order the pre-bent hose like this and replace it with that and here's where the actual leakage was occurring you turn this over and see the other side that was facing the engine There's the nipple where it came off. Right there where it was leaking. Down 
here you can see the two connections on the old cooler and over here on the driver's side of the engine is the other nipple faces the transmission straight down we're gonna have to clean all these connections before putting any hoses on here I'll spare you the tedious long-winded look at actually cleaning them but I keep a box full of sandpaper wire brush and scotch brite and start with the coarsest stuff like knock some off the wire brush then wrap a piece of sandpaper around it and twist get what I can off there and then scotch brite now if the hose if the fitting hose fitting in the nipple looks really good already then I'll go straight to the scotch brite and I'll skip the wire brush and the sandpaper but you know a couple of those look really bad so we're going to start with the wire brush and sandpaper and then hit it with scotch brite and then of course you got to use some clean antifreeze to lube the nipple before you try to shove that hose up on there it's not going to go oh and this is a 100 grit waterproof sandpaper can you see how much better it looks after hitting it with the wire brush but the part you can't see is the other side that I can't get to with the wire brush. That's why you need sandpaper and you got to make a loop with your sandpaper. Droop it down below that and then pull back and forth up on it like you're polishing a shoe. Same thing with that nipple right there. Took the wire brush and I can get to the outside of it and back and forth like so. And it, it made the outside of it look really good but I'll have to reach in behind there with the sandpaper to get the backside. Now I can't hold the camera and do this at the same time. So I'm just showing you here, I made a strip with the sandpaper and I bow it like that so that it goes up and under the nipple. And then I'll grab this end with one hand and this end with the other hand and just rock it back and forth on the nipple to get the part that we can't see and make it nice and clean. Now here's what they look like after the scotch brite and everything and the ones down there i did nothing but scotch brite those didn't do sandpaper or wire wheel because they were in such good shape but this nipple and the other one i had to do all three don't use oil or grease to lube these when you're putting the hose back on because that can damage the rubber of the hose use brand new straight coolant the concentrated type not the 50 50. okay youtubers we couldn't get the pre-bent hoses today we have to order those so we're gonna have to use some length of hose put it in here of course we're gonna make these longer than these so that they can make the curves more gentle and no kinking then when the pre-bent hoses come in We'll replace them again and we have the lovely Lucy here to help us out and maybe hold the camera for me all right we just got a cap full of antifreeze here and I dip the end in there and dip the other end in there oh. Then we transfer the clamps to the new hoses and put them down here out of the way. Kind of get an angle like that's going to go on there, so I need to be able to reach it right here. Face that way. And then I'm going to do the other one the same way. Okay, then you're going to want to feed it down in here below all the appropriate things. Alright, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've got the pinch clamp with the pliers and just slide it up to the end of the hose and just release. And you notice I'm doing the bottom hose first 
because it's going to be really hard to reach this bottom hose if I already put the top hose on. All right, we're doing a similar thing with this, feeding it down in here. Connect it on the bottom first. That last one, once I got it connected on the bottom, went to connect the top, I had to cut some of the length off because I had made it a little too long. So we'll probably have to do the same thing with this. And of course, I put the clamps on there, lubed the ends with a little bit of clean antifreeze. Go. Go for it. Okay, now we're putting it on the last connection here. So way up on there, all the way. And then, of course, I've held it down here before to see which position to put my clamp in so that I would be able to get to it. Otherwise, you'll end up with your clamp pointing somewhere you don't want it to be. Okay, you see here's one of the hoses and it's a little bit longer than the other one so that it can gently make these curves and go around so it doesn't kink. And then over here is the other hose and it runs all along underneath all this. Both of them going to the heat exchanger or the, or the oil cooler, whatever you want to call it. And we're done until the pre-bent hoses come in, we're done. And yes, it's a pink transmission, ha ha. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Put your questions down below. Until next week, get off the couch and get dirty.